printed the kayak fitties. I start with loading in a file. This was generated by the modeling program. And dropping it on our simulated bed here. I've selected a test printer, the kind of material and the size I'm going to use. So we take a look at it and we say, well, how is this going to print? We don't know yet. We will slice it. It's going to generate the code for it. We're going to take a look at it. You can see, okay, this looks pretty uh, okay, but now we start to see some blue-purple there. That's showing us there's some overhang. <coughs> All this material here is overhang. As we go further, you can see a little bit there, but I'm not too worried about that. And then as we go into the top, we may or may not see some. It looks like we do, so we'll open it up from the bottom and take a look. Okay, so we can see this whole area at the top is considered an overhang that may need support. But we'll try it and see. Also, we'll take a look at what it looks like to print. This thing lets you run a little simulator. So here we can we see the code on the left that's being generated, and this will show you the toolpath as it's doing now. It's generating a little skirt to get things flowing. Now it changes the perimeter of uh, holes. Same for the other side. And that's it for the first layer. We can skip up a few layers. Let's see, once we get up, okay, so let's get up to there. We can see that one as well. Same idea. Let's move around so we can see better. You can see the toolpath going around. Now it's going to do this outer point. So you can clearly see that it's basically printing in midair right there. There's nothing underneath it. It is going to need some supports in this orientation. <coughs> but just only to get a feel for it, I'm going to uh, take a look at it. Okay, so it takes. It looks like it takes about 34 minutes and uses about 15 cents of worth of material. Okay, so the next point is to go back. And now we're going to, well, okay, the next thing we're going to do is say, let's just put supports. Build plate only means that only the support places that are overhanging. Let's do that. All right. Oh, that looks better already. We have nice supports there, but, oh, I don't like what I see inside. We have supports inside the fitting as well. <coughs> that it's probably really not necessary, and it's going to be a pain to clean out. So, and by the way, we can now notice that one is going to take 44 minutes to print. But we go back to this model again, and I'm going to go over here and select this tool. Select um, medium brush size here, maybe a little bit larger. Uh, no, I'm just going to live with that one. Anyway, we zoom in, and we're going to say, I don't want any supports in this area. So I'm going to fill that up. And the red means don't paint, don't put any supports here. You can alternatively, you can paint in just where you want supports, but I think it's going to be easier to do this. So I'm going to try and get back under here and try to get enough for it to matter. We'll see. Oh, let's go on the other side. <coughs> the same thing. We just and basically I'm just painting with a mouse like you would any other type of masking. It's a little tedious, but you only have to do it once. Assuming I get all the areas. You know, it's a start. Let's just see if I need to be more precise. Let's rotate it out. Let's go back and slice it again. Take a look. Open it up. And it looks like I do have to be more precise. Looks like I need to get in on this side and on that side. So I just go back again. <coughs> and now I'm going to like tip it a little bit toward me so I can see and, and really kind of go in there and paint that area out. Because as long as it's overhanging the build plate, then we have to worry about it trying to automatically add supports for us. So that looks closer. Let's see how we're looking now. Ah, 
one little bit right there. See that? So we'll get there. It's hard to maneuver this thing around sometimes. But there we go. Okay. Slice again. Come back to the top and look at that. We are now clear. All right. So we can see what the whole model looks like at that point. And you can do this tool path at any point. You can see how it derives around each layer and fills it in. And you say, well, doesn't that need support? And it doesn't because we're using a thick enough filament here and a thick enough layer height, and it's just not that far of an overhang. So we can bridge between those just fine. So we're going to export that G code from here. We'll save it here. Okay. So, so it's going to be 41 minutes. So that's not bad at all. Now I would take this job and go and test print it and see how it works. If it works fine, then I would come back here and say, well, I need more of these. So let's make some more. Now that I got all these settings here, I'm going to get back and select the object, right click on it. And let's, oh, I didn't want to fill the bed with instances. That's too many. So let's come back here and let's set the number of instances to six. I'm not going to fill it because the bed heating is not all that regular. But you can see here I now have six instances and I can just live with them right there or move them around a little bit more. I'll probably move them around a little bit more because I just like them spaced out a little better. And I, I, tip to, I typically avoid the corner areas and the edges because it's a heated bed and it needs to stay hot for the plastic to stick to it. And those areas um, will start cooling faster. So we'll slice it now. It took a little bit longer. And we can see now it's gone from, what, 41 minutes before, and now it takes three hours and two minutes. And that's fine. It doesn't need to be attended. We'll come in here and we'll see it's basically doing the same thing as before. You can see it's printing supports in the bright green. The actual model itself is in orange. You can see the overhang, the fill. Now it's printing the rest of the model up. The main key is that it's got supports where it needs it and it doesn't put any supports on the inside. So now we just say export the G code and we're going to maybe put a 6 up here so I know which file it is. And that's it. Now we take this file to the printer and print it out.